Uh, guys, what does a pregnancy test look like? Um, it's a, it's like a thin piece of plastic with a thing on the end of it. Okay, so this is definitely a gun. <laughs> Do you know where that's from? No. <laughs> it's it out of context. It's probably really hard to get. It's a show. Uh, I know I've heard it. Hmm. Should I know this? Uh, I mean, it's a hard quote to know. I just found it and I was like, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, just like you guys laughed. I'll give you a hint. It's a TV show. Okay. It, uh, I think it's on the episode with, with Dice. The six-sided dice. Oh, okay. Oh, com- community. community. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just for reverence there. There's uh, Troy yeah. holding a gun. And I, I think he's going through somebody's purse. I forget. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's the uh, the episode with all the different universes. Ooh, yeah. Which is really good the since, uh, since we're going to be going some to some multiverse. Not of madness today. <laughs> yes. I'm going today too. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, well... I did not even prepare. I don't even think about it preparing the intros that you guys do. Mm. But so I'm going to just shoot from the hip. All right. We got our, I think I've done community before. So probably you guys are going to get possibly the same people. Okay. We'll see. Oh. We'll see. Um, this is where it gets hard because I want to say, well, everybody, welcome to the Utterly Useless Podcast. Let me just say that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, here with me, to my right, is the the movie knowledge <laughs> film film director wannabe Abed, <laughs> Brett Williams. Uh, I wonder what would my life would be like if I made everything into like a movie setting or tried to. <laughs> equ- I mean, I do do movie quotes, but if I were to just like start comparing real life to to movies, to movies. yeah. Interesting. The, the good thing is I don't think you have to to make sense of people. Yeah. <laughs> However, maybe I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that a, for a day. I'm going to try to see what that's like. <laughs> There's your next merit badge. Exactly. All right. And he, and across from me is the grump of the podcast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little racist. Not really. Uh, uh? <laughs> not really. I'm not going to call you out. <laughs> we all heard what you said before. <laughs> yeah, we all heard before recording. Uh, the Pierce Hawthorne of the podcast, <laughs> Timmy Criddle. I am a grumpy old man. <laughs> Both of those I just pulled from the hip. So, so what would you be? I would be, I would be one of the, let's see. So I am Jeremy Williams of, of the podcast. And I am, I am not. You know what? I would be, I can't remember his name. I would be Oliver, John Oliver's character. Oh, John Oliver's character. I was the, the psychiatrist teacher that, that unfortunately does some shady things. In. <laughs> Professor Ian Duncan? Yeah, Professor Ian Duncan. Yep. I am Professor Ian Duncan. I was That's waiting for you to be like the Brita of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to be Brita. I mean, I have the luxury of giving myself something that, like, not giving myself. I should have given myself the Hawthorne, to be honest, though. You could be the dean, too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about it for a hot second. I was like, I don't want to be the dean either. <laughs> you could be the, the mascot of the podcast, the human of the podcast. <laughs> oh, I'll be the human of the podcast. Be green. And yeah, I love that show. All right. Well, let's get on with it. All right, Merit Badges. What do we got? I'll start us off. And I have, I just said that, Merit Badge. Oh. So I uh, was giving my twins a bath the other day. And I said, son, get your finger out of your sister's butt. (laughs) <laughs> oh. <laughs> now for all for for the imagery i guess of it all is that my daughter was his twin sister was laying on her belly and he just rammed his finger into whatever he could find there proctologist <laughs> yeah he's a proctologist <laughs> hey, now proctologist. <laughs> so things i never thought i would see to my kid but i had to oh it's even greater when you're a teacher and you're just like you you 
I will preface things. I will preface, I can't believe I have to say this, but, and then I will say the following thing and the kids will like, half of them will be laughing and the other half will be like, I don't see the problem with that. And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> do you have to explain? <laughs> yes. Like, cause I'll get like this confusion. I'm like, you see, because of this, this happens and you shouldn't say and or do this. Yeah, it's funny. And I like walk them through the whole thing. Do they see it on the other side? They're still They're cool like, with it. <laughs> oh yeah. And then some of them are like, I'm fine. With, I'm totally fine with it. I do that at home. Like, it's just like, no. <laughs> that's funny. That's <laughs> as a teacher and you teach what grade fourth? I've taught third, fourth. I'm currently oh, fifth, but it, it happens in all of them. So you see some very interesting things. Oh yeah, I hear so many, so many things that are just like I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear that and keep on moving. Well, not only that, you get all the weird stuff that like is normal for a family and uh-huh. they bring into the classroom environment. Oh yeah. What's really bad is you're in if you're in circumstances where you're you shouldn't laugh, but you do. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I've gotten to, <laughs> I've gotten to the point where I'm really good at holding it in, and every so often I'll just be like, "I'm gonna go talk to the teacher next door," and I just walk out into the hall and just start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for later. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that that'd be tough to do that. All right, who's next? Oh, I'll go next. Uh, my merit badge is this week. I'm earning it today. Ooh. Um, it's the blockbuster month merit badge for me. Nice. I every every weekend for a month as of today, I will have seen a new blockbuster oh, yeah. film that's gone into theaters. That is extremely rare for me with having small kids and being able to go and do those kinds of things. I was wondering how do you wh- who watches your kids? Nobody. We bring them with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool too. I was just curious. Yeah. I was like, we just bring them. <laughs> we, we we only see movies that they want to see and sometimes the movies that we want to see but that's not true tim you know has on permanent repeat at his house lord of the flies and he just goes look kids this is <laughs> this <laughs> eyes is, glued open <laughs> <laughs> this is how you will survive we'll be back in a couple hours <laughs> yep <laughs> so uh, today i'm seeing tonight i'm going to be seeing the flash what did you see last week last week we saw fast x how was that I <laughs> do your kids watch it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm I'm a sucker for the Fast and the Furious series. It's just one of those series that it, it, you can you don't really have to think about. You can just put it on and just enjoy it. Um, it was it's silly, but it, it's entertaining. <laughs> how was how was Jason Momoa in it? Uh, it imagine a, a a Joker. Uh-huh. Like a character that okay. that is pretty much what he's doing in this okay film. He wants chaos, chaos. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. just speaking of, just aside, I just <laughs> I just barely saw a preview, and you probably may have seen it also. The Meg Two. Have you? Oh, seen Oh yeah. yeah, my kids want to see that in August. I watched that, and I'm like, Jason Statham is now becoming the new Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, his movies are like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, but that movie just, he leans right into the silly and fun of it. And you know, it's gonna, just going to be a fun, like, just relax and watch and enjoy. Here, here's a, a tangent. If you had to pick only watching Jason Statham movies for the rest of your life or Nick Cage movies, which would you pick? I think I know the answer, but. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. And they don't cross over. I don't think no. Jason Statham and Nick Cage are ever in a movie together. Not unless they're in The Expendables 4. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Cage. I, yeah. um, See, I, the, I think I'd choose Nick Cage easy. I would have to. It would be sad because I've not seen the whatever extraordinary talent movie. But I think I'd have to go with Jason Statham because out of all the Nick Cage movies that I've watched, like to me, they're not high on the re. re Rewatchability. Rewatchability. Thank you. It was hard for me for a second. <laughs> and I, I think I've seen half of the, or less than half of them because I like look at the synopsis. I'm like, I'm not interested in that. I want to see Renfield so bad. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad you two look, <laughs> think that it looks good because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just lean into it. <laughs> you go, I, oh, it's Nick Cage. I know I, what I'm getting. I feel like with Nick Cage, you might get a little more range, whereas 
Jason Statham. He's plays he's almost handsome the same, Rob. He plays the same character. Yeah. Yeah, you get Nick Cage, you get a National Treasure, The Rock, you get whatever else he's done, Gone 60 Seconds. Yeah. I mean, you get some good quality out of there too. Jason Statham, you get The Transporter See? 1 through 3. <laughs> Italian, <laughs> uh, job. Italian Job. Italian Job. The Fast and the Furious. Snatch. Snatch. I love Snatch. Crank. Um, Crank. Did you say Fast and the Furious? Yeah. He's in the Fast and the Furious. I didn't know that. Yeah. He uh, even has a special with, uh, it's part of the... Oh, Shaw's and Shaw's. Shaw 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 Shaw. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I didn't enjoy that one. Uh, the Meg. Uh, hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think for rewatchability, <laughs> I would have to go with Jason Statham because most well, of Nick Cage's I don't want to rewatch. What would you? Oh, I feel like I'm I'm still getting newer stuff with Jason Statham, so I'll probably lean towards that. Oh, okay, I'm all into Nick Cage. Okay, surprise! I was I'm like that was an easy no brainer for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brett, what's your mirror badge? All right, so I got something that you guys probably have gotten multiple multiple times in your life probably jeremy like a couple days ago if not like last night i got the projectile vomiting merit badge and i i say this because you both have kids yeah but you're not even in school anymore i know so here's I'm, how i got the projectile vomiting merit badge so uh the last day of school you know mostly because a lot of the kids know that my birthday's in the summer they kind of I, I don't really get much for teacher appreciation. It just all gets saved up for the last day of school. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I got was a, you know, a, a gift card to like, it was, it was themed. I've never gotten a themed uh, thing for teacher or for last day of school birthday or whatever, but I got a gift card to a Mexican restaurant. I got a bag of chips and I got, um, a thing of salsa that you know looked to be pr uh, pretty sounded pretty interesting and delicious from the uh, contents ingredients and whatnot and so i just brought it home and i just kind of sat it there it was completely sealed everything was fine and then at, like a, about a week ago i walked by i'm like that's so weird that um that uh, jar is now tilted off to the side. That's that's odd. And then I was like, ah, whatever. It's probably just me. Maybe I, 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 I'm very bad at paying attention. So <laughs> then I just kind of go amongst my ways and a couple of days later, I'm like, huh, now it's tilting the other way. That's weird. That's probably nothing. And so then I just, you know, mind my own business, do my thing. Then the next day I see it and the the lid is kind of bulging. And I'm like, okay, that's new. <laughs> and so I'm like, I should probably throw this away. But for some reason, the curiosity factor of what's going on with this superseded the, the rational thought of just throwing it away. So I take the salsa over to my kitchen sink and I just merely and this thing was sealed i know it was sealed because i opened it up just to make sure that this wasn't a kid that just randomly just grabbed a couple things and threw it in a sack yeah so it was sealed so i go over to the kitchen sink and i just uncrack it uh -huh. by just one crack and it projectile vomits all over my sink myself my floor and it was one of those things where it was like a 32 ounce thing of salsa. And I was like looking at all of the mess around and I'm like, there has to be more than 32 ounces in there. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm sitting there thinking, this is what most parents probably feel like when they have their kids like project all vomit all over their place. They're just like, wow, how did you get all of that in that like little yeah. body or something like that? It's very true. Mm -hmm. But that also comes with the same, like when a kid spills a drink and they only have like let's say an inch of <laughs> liquid in there <laughs> and it's like it just covers the whole table and you're like how did that fit all in there too it doesn't matter the, the <laughs> physics doesn't exist with kids no man so that would have been he was like <laughs> I, it felt did you feel defeated after that oh like, yeah that, be like, the instant because i was like i'm i'm literally covered in salsa it it got places you know, and you've probably heard this before. It got places I didn't know it was actually capable of traveling. <laughs> hey, cleaning up days later. <laughs> yeah. Still finding some. I missed yeah. a spot. Yeah. Is that because of fermented criddle? You're the 
Um, it ha- it could be possible um, bacteria that got into the jar and during production. I mean, it could be botulism. It could be a number of things. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> that would have been a cool grenade to throw. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Spin the wheel. All right. We have spin the wheel, which is a 10 categories of questions. We'll spin the wheel to decide who gets to ask each other what. And I'll go first. And I got kiss, marry, kill. So this one, I'm curious. This one is not anything grand, but I, I'm curious what you can pick. Beds, couches, or chairs? Hmm. Beds, couches, or chairs? Okay. I know. I'm marrying bed. Okay. I am having... Well, what kind of chair? Is it just like, a, like anything a chair chair? that is a single person use? Uh, I'll get rid of the chair and keep the couch. So you'd have to go in your car and replace the chair <laughs> for the couch. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how airplanes would work. Lazy boy. <laughs> well, you, you'd only be able to fly it like ultimate class or whatever. Yeah. First, first class. <laughs> like, oh, well, I, I wanted to pay for five. $59 for a trick ticket, but uh, because I, I've i uh, condemned myself to only sitting in chairs or lying in beds, I need to go snob class. So <laughs> Snob class. I had to save up my whole life to go to Florida. <laughs> Denver. <laughs> yeah, Denver. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I think... I think I would almost have that. I would uh, marry beds. I think I would. For your work, I think you need a chair. Yeah, I would kiss, you know, chairs, and then I would kill couches. That'd be so sad. You kill a couch. But you know what? I guess the way you can get around this is lazy boy chairs. Yeah, yeah. very true. So I can pr- imagine being a teacher in your class and you have just a lazy boy behind your desk. You'd feel like royalty. <laughs> yeah, you would. It's the kind that lift you up out of your seat too. <laughs> like no talking during the quiz. Like shh. And you're like, zzz, like, wait a minute. I'm go- I'm coming. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> oh, I would do the same as Brad. I'd I'd marry a, a bed. Can you also imagine being a kid during this situation asking this question? They're like, Yeah, oh. get rid of chairs. And they're like, Oh, now I have to sit on a couch in class. I guess you could sit on the floor. That's low. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Crisscross applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the couches are just so nice to lay down and watch a movie on. Especially it's, a comfortable one. I guess I'd have to have a bed <laughs> in there instead of I just have more beds. This is my twin bed that is looks like a couch, but it's not. Can you cheat and you take get a really nice couch and then just saw it in sections? And then it's chairs. Yeah. Well, I mean, not sections like, <laughs> not like individual sections, because once it becomes for an individual person, then it just poof, it, 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 it disappears. <laughs> Holds it on by a thread. Yeah. <laughs> but if you wanted to like saw a, a bed in half hot dog ways, and <laughs> make it thinner, <laughs> more like a couch, in other words. <laughs> I mean, there's different size couches and sofas. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of them you can actually mis- misconstrued as a chair. It's true. Like a big chair. A big chair. <laughs> All right, Curly, you're up next. And you got, would you rather? All right. Would you rather have a mediocre droid as a maid or assistant or a loyal, intelligent, talking eagle as a carrier pigeon. Hmm, that's a good one because so mediocre, like they don't do anything bad. They just don't do the best of job. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's also the maintenance behind it. If it breaks down, you have to fix it. Mm. Um, you have to plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Or a smart eagle that's like a carrier pigeon. So I could like go, hey, what what is this person doing? And then I can come back a, and a tell A loyal, me. intelligent, talking yeah. eagle. So I could... Like, yes, sir. What can I do for you today? They're like, Jeeves, come here. Because <laughs> I call it Jeeves, something I could bid. <laughs> Jeeves. I'd call, I'd call it Sam. Sam, Sam the Eagle. Sam. <laughs> there you the go. Eagle. Be like, Jeeves, come here. Come here, what? America. <laughs> can you go poop on this car? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I've been saving one up just in case you needed one, sir. 
<laughs> Something hasn't been settling very well. <laughs> Here's some Taco Bell if you need some help. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Like, guys, I do like the idea of somebody clean my house, even if it's mediocre. Like, uh, we have uh, one of those, you know, smart vacuums that vacuums in. I mean, I'd say that that actually that does better than I would more than mediocre. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what they would do to me. Like, what does mediocrity mean to me? <laughs> I think mediocrity to me would be it's you know it's good enough to be done, but it would probably drive you nuts. That's how I personally would yeah. um, dis- define mediocrity. But the thing is, sometimes I do mediocrity cleanups. <laughs> like whenever I clean up my kids' toys, they have these special they have bins where they all are supposed to go. I throw them in whatever bin it goes to, <laughs> like whatever I can fit it in, because uh, I'm I'm mediocre. Um, I would do the talking eagle because not only I, I would be so great because not only is he a talking eagle and can, you know, converse or whatever, but I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to say something and I don't want any record of it. So Sam, take this note to Jeremy's house. And once he's done reading it, I want you to quickly eat it so that there's no you know evidence of this note ever existing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> get a little tap on the work. Oh, hey, Sam. <laughs> what you got for me today? Here's your secret note. Should you choose to read it? <laughs> you know what? That would be really cool because I imagine eagles carry a decent, I mean, not as much as an African swallow or anything, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but they could carry quite a bit. And so if I ever needed to like give you something or something, I'd just hand it to the eagle. Like, hey, take this to bread. Hey, take yeah. this to criddle. Like, oh, hey, I ordered some Taco Bell. Go oh, pick it up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> If I could door dash with my eagle. Door dash with your eagle. (laughs) I am looking up how much an eagle can carry. (laughs) Because I am invested in this. Food has made you invested. (laughs) Yes. Because like getting food is with kids. I don't know. I'd love to be part of that study. How much can this eagle carry? Let's see. Eagles can carry. Generally, a male can lift about oh, a pound and a half, and a female <laughs> two and a half to three pounds. So it's going to have to be like you know multiple trips for your food delivery. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of eagle this is. <laughs> this is a question: Can an can an eagle pick up a fifteen pound dog? <laughs> it's on there for some reason. <laughs> there have been reports of hawks and owls attacking and carrying off very small dogs, but I guess it doesn't say anything about eagles. Eagle can only pick up a pound? I know. That can't be right. Maybe. I'm just... I mean, What kind of eagle are we talking here? (laughs) African or European? Um, So what would you you do, Tim? What would you do? Uh, I'd I'd probably do an eagle. I just like the idea of like uh, taking, you know, sending messages quickly without having to worry about text messages and or even it could be even little things too, like a note, like "Oh, take this to so and so." Yes, sir. Yeah. So a bald eagle can take five to six pounds. Okay. There you go. So if I get a bald eagle, yeah, like, you get a bald eagle, and it's also protected too. So if anybody kills it, exactly. Like, yep. Not only am I going after the person, but so is the force of the government. Five so. pound. Five pounds is a family meal. Yeah, it is. Like there you go. Yeah, because I'm just trying to think. Not that I would want this but KFC Bucket how much do you think those things caught weigh um possibly I, it's been a it's been a long time yes. since I've had a bucket so I think that's less than five pounds but yeah can, probably but, but can you uh, can you sign up your eagle for DoorDash <laughs> <laughs> you're you're pimping it out to do work for you like be like, uh, hey, hey, you got to hold your weight here. If you want to live here with me, you got to hold hey, your, your weight. Your eagle food isn't cheap. <laughs> That's true. But I eat mice. Yeah. But it's not cheap. It's not cheap. <laughs> I, I'm going with the eagle. Yep. Eagle. <laughs> All right, Brett. You're up and you got Desert Island. All right. If you're stuck on a desert island, what would you prefer as having company? A duck that can answer all the meanings of life, but it does sound like Donald Duck. Or a talking coconut that does comedy routines, 
nonstop. <laughs> they good comedy <laughs> routines? Just comedy routines. Man. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So it's the duck or the coconut. Uh huh. And the duck, I can know yeah. all the meaning of life, but, but he talks like Donald Duck. Uh huh. He talked like Donald Duck. <laughs> the one thing though is like if beyond answering like the question, what is the meaning of life and all that stuff? Is there anything else? No, I mean he answers all of life's mysteries. Oh, it, all it, of. So I can ask him like who killed JFK and yeah. all that stuff, and he'd be, be able to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, I will pick. I'll pick Donald Duck. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd be fine with that. Get used to it because as long as he doesn't do his little freak out, little I can't even do it. Yeah, it's blah, 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 blah. the duck seems to be more in control than the coconut. If it's nonstop comedy, yeah, I'd want it to look like one of those Moana coconuts. But I mean, if you ever got really tired of it, you can just kick it into the ocean and just floats right back in. And it floats right back. <laughs> Did it tell you the time that I was kicked out into the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it even used it, made me trying to murder it a joke. <laughs> it's a magic coconut, so if you try killing it, it just comes right back. And I bet he does a lot of crowd work, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there'd, be a, there'd probably be a lot of silly jokes with the coconut, too, like just puns and... Uh, I'll go with the duck. <laughs> he goes, I don't have milk nipples but you can milk me <laughs> it's like you watch movies no I'm a coconut duh <laughs> Don't do then he asks you like hey have you watched anything good recently no I'm on an island with you uh, you cracked me up <laughs> <laughs> alright I'm next and I got lick off this one I'm proud of because I have definitely thought about this one and it's grossed me out like not licking it but my life would just go ugh so, I gave a very specific location for this. So, in a veterinarian's office, a, re- a recently emptied water bowl for dogs, licking the bottom of that water bowl. An empty water bowl? Yeah, recently empty. So, it's still a little wet. And it may still have... Ooh, chunks of possible dog food in it. Exactly. <laughs> is it organic dog food? I, whatever the veterinary office has is what you get. Whatever's it's cheap. And you don't know how many dogs have licked out of there and all that. I will start off at ten thousand dollars. <laughs> maybe this is gross for me because like I, I don't know. Um, what's my bottom dollar? Processing, processing. Okay, four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, four thousand thirty-five hundred. Uh, let's see, three thousand. Let's see. Well, is this happening in the veterinary office? I mean, you could take the bull outside if you want to. But yeah. <laughs> I like to lick the bull in privacy. <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can I lick? Can I take that outside and lick it, please? <laughs> um. 2000. Hmm. 1500. Hmm. $1,000. Hmm. I will allow you to lick that bowl. Oh, man. Veterinary offices smell so disgusting. I just can't, I just couldn't stop thinking about that the whole time. Oh, this one had rabies. Great. <laughs> Cradle, you're yeah. foaming at the mouth now. <laughs> Hey, I oh. need a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, good on you, Crito. Congratulations. I will use that money to uh, cure my rabies and <laughs> be on my way. <laughs> Ugh. Like, ooh, dog food doesn't taste so bad. <laughs> well, what brand is that? <laughs> <laughs> it is a brand X. That's a cheap one. I like that. <laughs> All right, Crito. You got what would you have done one day? You're walking through a store and you run into your 10-year-old self. What would you have done? Ooh. Oh, man. I would... Other than tell him my, like, what his future looks like. 
Interesting. So just out of curiosity, you get pulled back in time with anything that you, any object that you have with you, right? Probably. Okay. Because I think there's like a, a bit of skepticism it, it, because I am growing up a sci-fi nerd. So I'd be like, yeah, sure. You've seen Back to the Future way too many times. <laughs> because my home screen is a picture of me as an eight-year-old. So I would first off show, hey, I am you. I am from the future. Then I would impart so much wisdom. I would, I would, it's kind of like John Mulaney's bit about Hitler. I don't know if you remember that. It's like, if you, if you, if you saw Hitler, would you kill him? If you saw Hitler were still alive, would you kill him? He goes, how do I know that's Hitler? Does he still look the same? Is he the same age looking that he's never aged? Or is he a really old guy that happens to look like Hitler? That's my situation. Is this look like me? Like, but, but do I know it's me? How do I know it's me? Or am I just <laughs> giving wisdom on some random kid that so happened to look like my younger self? Well, let's say he has proof. Oh, okay. Like, let's say he has a, an, an object from your childhood that he's holding. Well, okay. so wait, this, this takes place in a grocery store, right? Just grocery store, whatever. Is, it, is his parents around? <laughs> no, you just randomly, <laughs> randomly, oh. you, wa- you turn the aisle in a grocery store, you're walking down and all of a sudden you see yourself at 10 years old right in front of you. And he has proof that it's you. Okay. Like he'll show you the same birthmark. He'll show you a toy, your favorite toy, whatever. Oh, hey, would you show me the scar that you got from when you were trying to help your brother get a towel <laughs> because he forgot it? And then he got mad at you while you're covered in blood. You're yeah, late. You're late. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would yeah, I would just I would just talk about all my all the future like things to avoid and um reconsider. The only thing is like you are where you are in life right now, and anything you do to change that's gonna have a an impact, the little butterfly effect. Uh-huh. That's the only thing that's scary about it. Yes. All. It's the scars in life that make you who you are today. Mm-hmm. Flash. I'd be like, ah, uh, buy Google, <laughs> buy Apple. Yeah, I would just, I'd just tell it to buy stock at that point because I, I can't deviate. And as much as I like to deviate from all the mistakes I've made in life, I couldn't do what it. If, what if this was a, a, like an Avengers Endgame situation where it doesn't matter what you tell him, like what's happened in the past has happened. So he's just randomly there. What do you mean? Like in Avengers Endgame, uh-huh. they they step they established rules in time travel where, you know, it doesn't matter how much you go into the past or what you do with your past self, it doesn't reflect on what happens in the future. Oh, well, then anything I tell them is pointless, then, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I just I'd ask him questions. I wouldn't tell him anything. I'd be like, "So, how's life? Want to get a drink? <laughs> yeah, tell me about your life." Do you like any girls? Eh? Ooh, <laughs> I bet you do. How old are you? Yeah, you like this girl right now, don't you? <gasps> Who told you? I'm like, uh, I'm going to see the Flash movie. You want to come? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah. That'd be meta. Yeah. One thing I always do, and I want to just randomly ask you guys a question. If if you were to go back into, let's say, the 1950s, mm-hmm. and you could bring one movie with you, and you bring this like super high def uh, projector with you, what movie would you bring? Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> You've never even seen Independence Day. I know, but you, uh, it's it's for the Austin Powers effect. <laughs> it's historical documents. <laughs> okay, wait, no, I take that back. I take back Austin Powers so I could play the Independence Day <laughs> thing and be like. If you don't give me what I want, I will destroy the White House. <laughs> oh, you don't believe me? Watch this. Yeah. Boom. <sighs> I just destroyed the White House. <gasps> you monster. Yeah. Now your house is next. Give me all your money. And then just go from house to house and just kind of show people <laughs> that and just. <laughs> then you could go to other countries too and they do the, well, I guess you'd have to speak their language. Yeah. And so then I was like, hey, I'm going to do this to the Eiffel Tower next. Okay, France. <laughs> You know, remember how you gave up? Give up now. <laughs> Give up now. Give me more money. 
That's funny. Sorry to just <laughs> take us on that. Yep, nope. Well, Austin Powers. Well, I guess, Crillo, what is your question? What would you bring? Oh, I always man. just want to like blow their minds. I don't know. Some a part of me wants to scare them and like do like a zombie movie. Mm-hmm. And say, this is what's going to happen. Like maybe I am legend or. Oh, yeah. I don't know. This is, this is what life is like. I am legend. But think about something it from the 1950s. Scare them. From the 1950s, you're, they're listening the, to the radios and. If you're showing them the night, uh, Will Ferrell. I mean, not Will Ferrell. Will, Will Smith. Smith. I mean, it, it, you know what the funny thing is? You, you bring back <laughs> I Am Legend, and you and you show them that, and you're like, "Yeah, this is a documentary." And they're just like, "Huh, disappointed." <laughs> <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> disappointed, but sucks. <laughs> you, you're saying they're not going to be scared at all in the fe- for the They'll future. They'll just be like. Oh, I mean, it's an interesting documentary, but man, so disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> what about World War Z? <laughs> oh, I hate that movie I so know. much. Oh. <laughs> I hate that movie. I mean, Dawn, I think that Dawn, might be scary. Dawn of the well. Dead? <laughs> Except that had a happy ending at the end, I guess. Dawn of the Dead. Like, cause, uh, yeah, that would probably be the scariest thing that you could do, Dawn of the mm-hmm. Dead. But okay, and that, and that would be fun to watch too. Dawn of the Dead. I would just bring him some. Oh, I get. What about the Matrix? What about the Matrix? Would they even get it? Probably not, because there's no te- there's no technological yeah. stuff. Back see, there. Like, see that calculator? You can plug that calculator into your brain, and that's what's going to happen. Really? Ah, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> Show him Avatar. We turn blue. <laughs> And then they'd be like, wait, okay, so that one girl and him, they hook ponytails. And then, and then, I, don't, and then, I don't get it. And then he grabbed that like dinosaur thing and hooked his, po- like, in the future, do pe- bestiality? <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, oh, shoot, I just had it. I already forgot it. Oh, what about Inception? Oh, that would be going into people's dreams. That would be cool. Be very Twilight Zony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I'll bring that one. All right. Back to where we were. Uh, that was Critical's turn. So, Brett, it, you got how much? How much would it cost you to glue chicken feed all over your exposed skin wearing, like, essentially basketball player attire? So, jersey, that, mm-hmm. that kind of exposed skin. Lay face with your head protected, though. Lay completely still for 20 minutes in a pin pole full of pens and allow them to possibly pick off the food and or more of you than you would actually want. How much? <sighs> so my face is protected. So that's uh-huh. good. Is it's the, my money maker right there. Is the glue huh? organic? <laughs> <laughs> it could be toxic. It doesn't matter. All right. Well, at least. Well, it's not super glue, though. Yeah. That's all I care about, right? It's not yeah. super glue. So, we're like Elmer glue? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That doesn't hurt too Rubber bad. Rubber cement. I don't know. Now it's just the pecking. Yeah. It's the pecking. Um, I mean, I'm going to have a lot of blood. There will be blood. Do you have to lay still or? Yep. Okay. So, when they so start how pecking. How long? 20 minutes? 20 minutes. Oh, my God. I mean, there's a good chance because chickens are kind of stupid. So. There's a good chance that they're just like, yeah, whatever. And, and my head is like in like a, yeah, a, a, like a, 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 a dome or yeah, a protective case. Yeah, just think of it like I'd just say, uh, well, lacrosse helmet. Yeah, because they have the masks all in the front. Man, this sounds like torture. Are you a villain? <laughs> I'm just working on my next evil scheme. I mean. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I would do it for. I'm thinking my bottom dollar would be. You don't have to like flip over, right? No, you just lace just, completely. Can still. I lay on my belly? If you want to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that helps a lot because I want to. I, I I don't know if that's better because then they get the back of my legs and they get my back. Well, you said basketball attire. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm wearing a shirt. And so it's just my arms and my legs. Shirt mm-hmm. shorts. Yeah, I'm I'm going on my I'm laying on my belly. Can I um, wear can I wear gloves on my hands? No. No. Because it's basketball attire. That's basketball. But oh. can you go like this? Can you shake sure, you, your fist? You, you could fist up if you'd like. Fist up. Fist up. 
Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say ten thousand. Like I'll be able to. I can't move my hands. Once you're in the, I, I guess what I much like uh, the airplane or directions or whatever. Please, you know, sit it. Sit still. Sit still or whatever. So once you get assumed position, so like, then it's just like. <laughs> I mean, if yeah, if you want to taunt the chickens, yeah, sure, like wave them your way. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, Twenty-seven million. Mm. Wow, that's a random number. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'm cheaper, I guess, by a lot. <laughs> okay, go for it. <laughs> Free Reddit. All right, we got our Reddit questions ready for all of us to contemplate and answer so that people can have answers once and for all. This Reddit question comes in from resident fan 7970. Who's your favorite villain of all time? Ooh, that is an interesting question. I already have this one locked and loaded I, forever. I think I know who your favorite villain of all I'm time sure is. I'm sure you know I, who it can is. I, can yeah. I take a guess? Yeah. Kingpin? No, he's second. Ooh. He's second. Ooh. Interesting. He is my number two. My number one is specifically Heath Ledger's Joker. Ah, okay. Love him. Mm. That, I mean, when I think of villain, I instantly was thinking like Heath Ledger Joker. Yeah, he's, he might be my top pick. Um, I mean, unless I guess Pinky in the Brain a villain. <laughs> sort of. I mean, I do. I I do enjoy Hans and Die Hard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's a good. He's bad a guy. good villain. I'm gonna have to go with Khan. Khan. Khan's yes. a good villain. Mm -hmm. The old school Khan. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched school. that in like. Not into decades. the darkness, Khan. No. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, next question comes from Mine Nocha. Whatever that. <laughs> What's your all-time most satisfying movie ending? Ooh, that's a hard one. Because like most satisfying, like here's like oh yes, uh, I want to say Shawshank's up there. I don't know if Shawshank is the most satisfying. Oh, I I'm sitting there thinking, going through all the comedies, going through all the sci-fi shows. I think drama and like action movies would have a better satisfying ending, in my opinion. Yeah. Because obviously they've endured something. You know, I, I've said this multiple times before. I'm going to go out on a limb. It's it's probably, there's probably one that's a lot better. But I'm going to go with the ending to Infinity Game. Because I always appreciate, because when you think about, you know, I've been re-watching Batman 89, mm -hmm. preparing for The Flash. I didn't watch Man of Steel because... I had heard a rumor that, you know, you really don't need to know anything going <laughs> into it. So I was like, okay, why do that to myself? And, you know, one of my biggest complaints is at the very end of most every single movies, the, the, when the bad guy loses, he dies. Whereas mm -hmm. Thanos at the end of Infinity Games, he wins. And, you know, it sets up the second movie perfectly, but I, I would like, I would like more movies to you know it doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth because you know things are going you know avengers will reassemble mm -hmm. and everything's going to be okay at the very end of the day but i think it is you know if you have a master plan for something happening going forward allow the villain to win because and it's been a while since i've seen the harry potter movies but it's almost like you know harry potter generally beats so and so in this movie, mm -hmm. you know, why can't he like take an L every so often? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I know what you're saying with the uh, Infinity Wars there that the ending is like sad, like, and it's not a happy one, but it is a satisfying one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I think of a lot of movies that have some really satisfying endings. Like, I do like the Dark Knight ending, I like Infinity mm -hmm. War ending, the Empire Strikes Back ending is great, even. And I, I mean, even the Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse or across the Spider-Verse had a pretty good ending because mm -hmm. it leaves you wanting more. Um, well, I and it le and it leads into the next one. Well, yeah, that's what I heard. I heard that they basically were made 
into the Spider Verse two and three at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's exact. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I also think um, as far as you know, having a W, Infinity, uh, not Infinity, but uh, Endgame had a good ending too. Like well, that. Like not that like the the long drawn out of like Tony Stark's death was sad but like before that like that whole battle scene mm-hmm. if it ended right there like with Tony Stark you know saying I am Iron Man boom like goosebumps he's you know and then the slowly fading away of Thanos and all that and the emotional I like that ending too mm-hmm. man did, Avengers just did good endings mm-hmm. with uh, the brothers I forgot the Russo brothers I'll go with that I'll go with the the Infinity Wars. Okay. Okay. All right. Next question here brought to you by Mysterious Command 15. What's the biggest movie flop you've ever watched? Um, possibly. And it's here's a weird thing is that I kind of enjoyed the movie. I think it's a flop, but I like John Carter. It was fun. It hmm. was weird, but it was fun. It. I have not. Yeah, I haven't watched it because yeah, people said not to, so I didn't watch it. But I have. I've always wanted to go back to it because I've actually seen that people. That is, it was on somebody else's list I watched recently on YouTube, where they said this movie is considered a a horrible movie, but it's actually really good. Yeah, I think it's uh, that people came into it with the wrong mindset. Is what it was. Well, and the interesting thing is they they. You know, it was based off of the Marvel c- character, John Carter of Mars. I think possibly one of the worst things that they could have done is or take out the of Mars part because mm-hmm. the show is just called John Carter. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't set up, you know, I mean, the, the previews kind of do. I mean, again, if you think about, you know, what I've said multiple times, Adam Carolla's face-off theory, yeah. you know, you see a trailer, you know, you you in, you believe that this is the world that you would like to a little bit know more about and invest in, but I think John Carter is possibly one of the biggest flops that I've seen, but I did enjoy. Yeah, I agree with that, that uh, theory altogether. I mean, some people think that Shazam 2 is a flop, and I'm just like, eh, I like Shazam 2 too, also, so. I don't think it's a flop. I don't think it's making as much money as they would like it to. Yeah. And, and the, the, Here's the hard part because I do like watching YouTube channels. I do like watching negative YouTube channels because I think somewhere in the negativity, there's actually a good rationale for it. But the problem is, is everybody wants to say everything is the worst and own something so they can be right. And it's almost like they're rooting for failure. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, just because you don't like it or just because it's not you know, your perfect movie. You know, I want to say there's never going to be a perfect movie. Like, I I disagree with people who rate things a one because nothing is that bad. No. If, yeah, I agree. For something to be a one, it almost has to be, especially if we're talking about entertainment, like movies and TV shows, it has to essentially be somebody just filming uh, like a, a chainsaw and just like having the worst sounds ever. And then like there is not only is it not entertaining, it is the opposite of entertaining, whatever that is. Yeah. Well, and then I also disagree with people rating everything a perfect 10 because there's, it's not going to be perfect. There's mm-hmm. always going to be a hole. So like I, I, I've, my theory is cause lots of people like, are angry about, you know, the the one rating review bomb. Well, can't you also say that there is positive 10 rating review bombs? Mm-hmm. So, but everybody always wants to be outraged about the one review bomb. No, both 10s and 1s are review bombing. They're just polar opposites of review bombing. And I think the actual importance of the actual review, take both two the, the, the 1 and the 10 out, and then take your rating from the two through nine, and that is like your more accurate rating for what the fans think. Yeah, I I think when it comes to, well, people on social media or critics, they rather be on the same page hating a show than being sticking their neck out 
and liking something that is not mainstream. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I was listening to a, a YouTube channel about the most latest Indiana Jones movie. And the guy, he got to watch it with a completely theater full of critics. Mm-hmm. And there's like, you know, these pause scenes where, you know, it allows the audience to like gasp or, you know, ooh or ah or clap or go yay or something like that. And he says it's hard to watch a movie with critics because you could say that everybody hated it. But critics don't watch movies to applaud. They no. don't watch mu- movies to go ooh and ah. They watch movies to critically analyze it. Mm-hmm. So he's like, you know, based on the audience that he was with, it looks like it's going to be a bust. But he didn't watch it with fans. Yeah. Yeah, you're taking away that experience too. I mean, of the theater, I'd hate to say it, but like the theater is like, it's like going to a stand-up comedian. There's an energy. And nobody laughs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if nobody laughs, then yeah. Then except you, you're like, ugh. Yep. Um, I think this is a hard question for me because I'm looking at like my MDB right now and I'm comparing like what my ratings were versus what like the rest of IMDBs, like the general fans. So the original question was what's the biggest box office flop? No, no what's no. the what's the biggest movie flop you've ever wa- oh biggest what's, movie flop. Oh, okay. I thought it was the I read it wrong too. I thought it was the biggest movie flop you enjoyed. It's uh but you've ever watched. Um I mean <laughs> a, oh, right earmuffs. <laughs> Austin Powers three. <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible movie. Oh. I mean one movie that I I enjoy but it was a box office flop was Last Action Hero. Oh yeah. That was a good one too. I, I enjoy it. I think it was a little ahead of its time. I mean, without that, there probably would be no Ready Player One. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, I really enjoyed that. And plus, I mean, it came out the same weekend as Jurassic Park. So, Ooh. that that was that's brutal. that was stupid. That is brutal. <laughs> but because this is the biggest movie flop you've ever watched, I'm just going with Awesome Powers Three because I think, in my eyes, that was one of the biggest flops I've ever seen. That was pretty bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. Brett. Yeah, you, I, I, I think John Carter. Oh, yeah, John Carter. That's right. That's right. Okay. Too Old to Be Punk says or asks, what is the silliest movie that you've enjoyed? I don't even... The silliest. I think the silliest movie, honestly, is the um, the Mystery Science Theaters. 3000. Yep. They're funny uh-huh. because you're watching... Their commentary on top of that. Or would those consider be? Would you consider those to be movies? Well, it's like an epic TV series. I mean, if you were to watch the standard movie mm-hmm. and enjoy the standard movie without the commentary, I think that would be the silliest movie that you'd be entertained by. But you're being entertained by a silly movie or a ridiculous movie with the comment the, with the comedic commentary on top of it gotcha i changed my vote i just thought of this i was thinking probably any tom arnold movie and that just came to the stupids <laughs> the stupids oh the stupids is a hundred percent the silliest movie that i have enjoyed <laughs> you, you know my favorite thing is uh what was it i was at a faculty meeting years ago and they wanted us you know they were like unveiling all these new things and they're just like hey you know there's this thing called google drive and i'm just like yeah sure like, I know, like, whatever. And they're like, we would like you to make this a bookmark. You know, they're, and I you know, like, does everybody know how to do make a bookmark? And uh, everybody's like, uh, uh. and they're like, okay, we want you to bookmark Google Drive on your Google Chrome uh, bar. And, and they're like, and you need to name it something. And so, because I was forced to participate in it, I bookmarked Google Drive, which is absolutely stupid to do, but I did it because it was the directions. And I named it Drive B. <laughs> Drive B. <laughs> no, no. Drive B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a dumb movie. But then I was thinking that or Carpool. I don't know. If Carpool. You I don't think that I've is seen a pretty Carpool. silly movie. It's Tom Arnold again. <laughs> Tom Arnold does silly movies. Yeah. In the 90s. Um, That's a nice. That or, if, a or you movie. like Ernest. Ernest is, Ernest is silly too. Silly. Which which Ernest movie? Because yes. th- there's some of them that I just I find <laughs> so grating. I like, didn't enjoy any of them to be honest. Sorry. Like 
I know growing up, everybody was just like, Ernest Goes to Camp. I hated that movie. I, I hated that movie just as much as I hated like the Dark Crystal and <laughs> like yeah, the Ewoks as a kid. And, you know, I was like one of those, one of the few kids that just hated the Ewoks. But uh, I would, and, and I still love this movie to this day. And every so often I bring this up to Jeremy and he's just like, no, it doesn't hold up. And I'll rewatch it and I go, totally holds up to me. What is that? And that is The Rocket Man. It doesn't. Fred yeah. Randall. But that is silly. <laughs> that is pretty silly movie. I love, oh, I love Harlan Williams. I love The Rocket Man. It totally holds up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, the funny thing is, is I watched that, like, what was that? It was probably like 17 at the time. And I'm like, I totally loved every single second of it. And I bring it home, show it to everybody. And everybody's like, yeah, that's a pretty good movie. I'm like, no, it is awesome. So yeah, that is the best, that is the best live action Disney movie followed by the Emperor's New Groove, which is the best animated Disney movie. <laughs> it, it, it He's what? got a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Squeak, squeaking, squeak, squeaker. Um, but no, yeah. I, I mean, at that time I really loved it, but when I rewatched it, I was like, oh, that's nah, funny. As I remember it. I remember Three Ninjas being really sick oh, when yeah. I was growing up. Three Ninjas was awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to our drafting time. So today we are drafting our uh, TV shows that are canceled or have ended or whatever uh, that we will want to bring, bring back. <clears throat> and I'm grateful I have the 101 here because... Oh. I obviously tipped my my cap at the very beginning. I am bringing back community. Oh, did not see that. I mean, does that does that count as if they're making a movie? Yeah, I'm bringing it back as a TV show. Though. Okay. <clears throat> so these are, I don't know if I said it at the beginning, but these are TV shows we were bringing back. Yep. All right, okay. Criddle. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, I don't know if this counts, but I, I'm, I'd like to reboot uh, Batman the animated series. Ooh, it will be very, very difficult and a long, tedious process to recast the Bruce Wayne Batman voice because Kevin Conroy was fantastic mm -hmm. with the role. But I would like to bring it back and then maybe do something fresh with it, a little grittier. It'd be even cooler if it was live action. But yeah, I. I had never really watched that show. I don't know why. It's pretty good. Pretty good for a 90s show. It was based off of the Tim Burton Batman, but... Oh, really? Not too I bad. didn't know that. I mean, I can see that now. Uh, I I did watch... I don't know why, but I enjoyed Spider-Man a lot more back then. I enjoyed Spider-Man. I, I was watching like the breakdown of Spider-Man and... Because I, I was 100% in to the Batman the animated series. I love that one. I totally agree with... Them, it, the difficulty of recasting the voice. And, but I, it was funny because I didn't realize, I just always just some lumped up every single superhero is, oh, they're all, they all are together. I had no, <laughs> no idea. Friends. I had no idea that there was a DC or a Marvel. I was just totally oblivious. It, it wasn't until I taught a kid who I was ta asking about the Ant Man movie, he, he looked at me and he goes, eh, it's okay, but I'm a DC guy. And I'm like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, 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 that that ten year old basically taught me that there are two different, uh, a minimum of two different universes. I was like, wow, mind blown. <laughs> um, yeah, I went for shows that I would love a fresh reboot and possibly further continuation. So I went with Heroes. Oh. Because the first season was great and mm -hmm. then Garbage Dumpster Fire happened afterwards. The writer's strike. I have that on my list, but yeah, it was a Yeah. That was a bad first time. season was great, but then it went way downhill after that. And the other one I would like, since I have the wheel pick, is Lie to Me. I have that on my list. I love that was also during the the second season was during the writer's strike, oh, wasn't it? Yeah. I loved Lie to Me. That was fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. That was one where the first season happened. You're like, this is amazing. And the second season happened. You're like, 
what is this? Is that the same thing as like prison break? I uh, like the premise. Yeah. So lie to me is this guy who can determine um, what are they called? Micro expressions. Mm-hmm. Oh, so like just by looking at you and talking to you, he can see the small little expressions you're making to determine what like, are you lying? Are you, what are you feeling? Interesting. And he breaks it down and they show it like, I mean, I don't know how factually accurate this show is, <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun. Okay. And the guy that plays the main guy, I mean, he's in a lot of things, but this is definitely like the show for me. Like that he I'm like I didn't know him really before the show, even though he was in one of the Hulk movies. Yeah, he was oh. the uh yeah. other Hulk guy. Abomination. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Tim Roth. Tim Roth. Yep, Tim Roth. Yep. All right, Criddle, mm-hmm. you're back on the clock. All right. Well, um, trying to figure out what I'd do. I'm going to do uh, a, I'd like to do a live action reboot of this. And I mean, I know they're, they're doing movies, but I think this would work. This series would work better as a TV show. And that's the real Ghostbusters. Hmm, that'd be interesting. I, I mean, if you've watched Reaper, the show Reaper, yeah. I think it's a similar concept as Reaper, but I think they can do a, like a 45 minute live action Ghostbuster television show. Now, would you want it to be heavier on the drama or heavier on the comedy? Heavier on the comedy. Okay. Not the drama. I mean, I think there can be some dramatic moments, kind of like like a psych almost, but uh-huh. but more more lean more into the comedy of it. Okay. That'd be cool if psych was if if Sean and Gus were they were Ghostbusters. That would be cool. <laughs> All right, my turn here. Um, I, I personally, you know, held off on this, and Brett probably predicted I'd say this, and so I, but I knew nobody was going to grab it, so I left Supernatural. <laughs> going on past fifteen <laughs> season, we need more. <laughs> I need more. Supernatural <laughs> is life. <laughs> I love me some Supernatural. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's, it's He's still got me. the wheel. Oh, yeah, you got the wheel. Um, and then so you Brett picked lie to me, so I can't pick that one. Got community, still happy about that one. I am going to just pick uh Life in Pieces, which I know none of you have watched. No, you talk about it a lot. I have. Oh, you have? Yeah. There's like what, four seasons? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great show. Did you like it? I, I enjoyed it. I yeah. haven't watched it since, but I've enjoyed it. Oh man, I love Life in Pieces. That was a show ended way too early. All right, so that's oh, me. Why, Criddle, back to you. Okay, I'm gonna go with a reboot of the A Team. Ooh, I think that would be a really fun show, especially nowadays. I'm just curious, you know, who they'd pick for the TV show? Would you go for a star cast, or would you go for like a nobody cast? Um. I, I feel like like well, like last week we talked about having like maybe one singular like no name or mm-hmm. no name and then having like a bunch of unknown names. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I think um, the main guy would have to be the known name. The known name, yeah, like yeah. Han- Hannibal. Yeah, maybe the guy who plays Hannibal. Yeah, maybe the guy who plays Hannibal. I don't know, but I think is he funny though? But I mean, do you want your lead to be funny or do you want your your side? I don't know, because I always felt like I liked Liam Neeson's version where he's like, Oh, I love he, it when a plan comes together. He wasn't really funny though. He was more I don't know, serious then, right? He was serious, but he was also had a sense of humor. Yeah. I mean, probably along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would work as a week to week show. Mm-hmm. The eight the funny thing though is like what is with like the so the eighties the TV shows had like the same kind of I don't know action it was mm-hmm. car chases cars you know going off cliffs uh, guns everywhere in the streets you know kind of thing we don't have that anymore in in TV shows like it's way too close to real life <laughs> <laughs> exactly like nobody's pulling at least I mean I guess Lethal Weapon was a TV series not too long ago where. I mean, I don't think the weapons were like, I think 
these shows are more like psych where they're they're solving s- these crimes that are kind of hidden. They're not happening on the streets in front of us. Well, and I think probably the difference between like, and psych was probably one of the more last ones to kind of do it, even though they kind of did it is psych had was, was just like, like, you know, your mystery of the week with, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Eventually they would have like some ties into the grand overarching thing. Whereas a lot of the 80s stuff was just your action adventure of, of the week and then it was done. Mm-hmm. And like there's something nice about an overarching thing, but I think it'd be kind of nice just to kind of seal off every single episode at the very end. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Cause then you could just come in and yep. And pick up wherever you start. Mm-hmm. I think the A team can do something like that. Yeah, I agree. And so could Ghostbusters. Actually, but I would really, I would really like, I would really like a dark Ghostbusters. Uh, I think that's a nice what darker I, take on it. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like I enjoyed Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I'm looking forward to the sequel. But oh, they're doing a sequel oh, on that. Cool. I didn't know that. Supposedly comes out this December. Hmm. That'll be cool. All right. And it goes to Brett now. All right. So wheel pick. So I had an easy one that I was waiting for it to be stolen and it hasn't been. And then I have one that is kind of like what you proposed, Tim. However, di- you know, differently also at the same time. And so I'm going to go with the one that I thought was going to be poached easily. And that is Prison Break. I thought about it. I loved the first season mm-hmm. of Prison Break. And I remember the second season of Prison Break and I was just like, oh, now we're in Tooele, even though that doesn't look anything like Tooele. And now they're arrested. They broke out of prison to only get arrested. And then the third season, I was like completely out of. And I remember being told, oh, now they're like in Panama Mm -hmm. and they're they're arrested. And they're arrested. I'm like, no. The Panama one was... I don't know if I finished that one, but that was a kind of a cool thing because they're in a different kind of prison system where it's more of like a the prison guards just don't want you to get out. If you live or die in there, they it's don't up care. to you. Oh. They don't care. Interesting. So I was like, oh, this so like not only is it like, you know, trying to get out of prison, but also trying to survive at the same time. And I forget who, but one of the guys is injured pretty badly. So you know, he's not as helpful. I, I mean, think, I, I think the neatest thing, like, there was, because they created so many good characters, like, and, and the casting was perfect because mm. Michael was, like, that guy is perfectly cast. Yes, his brother is. is perfectly cast. Mm-hmm. And then what's his face with the pocket? The teabag. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, You'd love to hate him. Oh, such a slime ball. Um, I think that, oh, and then the Russian dude. Yeah. So, I, I would love a... A reboot, a complete reboot of that, but kind of go in a different direction. Mm-hmm. The second one, since I have the wheel pick, and this is kind of goes on with what Tim was saying, is I would like a reboot of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, darker, like you said, with mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. However, here is my modification. Instead of Giles, crossover, it's Buffy. She is in the oh, Gi- she's Giles. She's the Giles position, and we don't do what because I kind of would watch it with you and Dad when it was on TV, but I got so tired of you had like the girl from uh, American Pie that was the witch. I'm like, I don't like this. And then they brought in. I don't even know who you're talking about. Um, you're not talking about the girl from uh, Euro Trip, right? No, the daughter, the little girl. No, no, I'm talking about the the American Pie, the the band camp chick. Oh, that. Oh, was yes, yes, yes. Forgot where about her. she was a witch, and it was just like I don't care for this. And then they brought in Scott Evil, who was also a vampire or not a, a werewolf, and I'm just like, like I stopped caring. Like the first couple of seasons of Buffy, I was really invested in. Would uh, what's his name make appearances? Um, Guy from the guy Bones. from Bones, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Didn't he have a spinoff? Of yeah, Buffy? he did. Angel, Angel, uh-huh. yep. yeah. Then he's gotta. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I would like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer, except a tad bit darker. Okay. I never really. I watched it a little bit because Dad watched it, but I didn't watch it much, and I never got interested in it. So it would be nice for me just to have a reboot, just so I can start with something new. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right, Cradle. Okay. Last pick. My last pick. Uh, it might surprise you, but I'd like a live action of this show. Um, kind of like National Treasure meets Psych, in a sense. But I'd like to see a live action. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? So instead of a game show, or instead, instead of, of a the game cartoon, show. Of, like kind of similar to the cartoon, they're okay. on the chase for this. Uh huh. All master villain. Did either of you see the Netflix? Uh, where in the world is Carmen? Okay, neither nope. did I. No. Nope. Okay. I didn't even know they had one. They had a short for a short while, but I want to reboot it in a live action form. <laughs> do, would Rockapella be singing the? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> where in? The... <laughs> all right. All right. Um, my last pick here, since I'm the last one. Um, I am going to pick. I want to reboot Better Off Ted. Oh, Better Off Ted was. Do you ever watch that, Criddle? I don't think so. Oh, you need to. It was my first binge on Netflix. I remember my first binge. I mean, it was back then when Netflix. I feel like didn't have very much. Yeah. Of an offering, you're like, uh, what is this? Uh, there's a show called Better Off Ted. Okay, I'll give it a try. I mean, so what it is for Criddle, it, it's a it takes place in like this weird workplace environment where there's you know, it's like an R and D company that's pumping out new things all the time that can solve the world's problems. But they're very dangerous and incompetent. <laughs> yes, and they um, they always get out of control. And then there's the um, bureaucracy of working for the man, I guess. And and the company that says they care about you, but they really don't. And the company never makes any mistakes. <laughs> yes, like they they double down on any mistake that like wow. it, that has ever happened. <laughs> All right, it is a <laughs> funny funny show, and that show could be a hundred percent rebooted with almost this probably the same cast, just later on in the years. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to look into that. Yeah, but better off Ted is. I think that was one of the shows that just went too soon. Like I never even heard about it until it was on Netflix and all the way done. But okay, great show. All right, now it's time for our recommendations. So my recommendation, I'm going to beat all of y'all to it, especially probably Krill. Um, and I think it's been recommended a couple of times. Just doubling, tripling down on it is uh, Ted Lasso. Finish that. Good stuff. I hope it's not the last season. I'm currently going through it right now. Because I know that they're, it's up in the air whether or not they're going to do another. He could, we can always use a little more Ted Lasso. I know, right? Ted is just such a great human being. It's, it's really a good rewatchable show. It is. like That would make my list of rewatch, most rewatchable. Yep. I could see that. Um, okay. I, I approve of that recommendation. Um, I look forward to watching season three. In hopefully a day or two, we're binging it right now. <laughs> um, my recommendation this week, pre recommendation, is probably the same, probably as Brett, but The Flash. I'm looking forward to seeing it tonight. Um, if I have to take it back next week, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, undo, 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 control Z. <laughs> I, I doubt it with Fla The Flash the way it looks so far. You know, I, I'm, I'm been purposely trying to avoid spoilers and reading reviews of anything because I'd rather just go into it fresh. That's how I am these days yeah. always. I don't, I don't pregame <laughs> any more movies. I used to a ton. Like, the most I've heard is it's, there's a lot of nostalgia trip, but I'm like, okay, I, I, that, that's not spoiling it for me. So yeah. I look forward to it. Yeah. Nope. I recommend also Flash. <laughs> uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to maybe keep fingers crossed Batman Beyond featuring Michael Keaton as the uh, old Bruce Wayne future movie. Oh, I know that nostalgia. Make G it happen, Hollywood. James Gunn talking to you. I know you're a listener. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do Why haven't you returned our emails about it, coming on the show? Do you want to be a, like a special guest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on, Gunn. Um, yeah. One thought I had. So <laughs> the other day I was doing some Googling. Mm -hmm. And I was looking, I'm like, where is these shows I knew are coming out this year? And I haven't. One was Futurama. Mm -hmm. And it's coming out in July. Oh, I'm cool. happy about that. So, And then there was another show that I'm trying to remember that is 
uh, coming out in July as well. And I will look for it and keep you posted because there was another show that I've been waiting all year for it to come out. Um, I know Stranger Things is coming out soon. I mean, that they, at least from what I've read, I don't know if they have an exact date yet. Interesting. Let me just see if they have it up so that all the listeners don't have to. I'm ready for the final season of Cobra Kai. Oh, yeah. That comes out. So I didn't even know they're still going. So yeah, there's one last season. And what was it? Both uh, the actors that played Johnny Lawrence and Daniel both said that they were heartbroken that they can't they decided to cancel after six seasons. And I was like, well, I think to me personally, unless and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel as though it's good, but the only thing that they're really adding to it is, you know, they're adding the Cobra Kai dojo there, you know, they swapped out crease for uh, Terry silver and stuff like that. But it seems to be almost like the same thing where, you know, you have Miguel being angry at, you know, what's his face, his son. Then there's like forgiveness. Then there's not. And I feel as though they're kind of almost limited in a way until, you know, it becomes Cobra Kai where it is now, Johnny Lawrence's son is taking over the dojo versus uh what is it Sam is that his uh is that the daughter the daughter yeah yeah so th- that would be kind of an interesting thing so but I don't know I don't know if I, I think six seasons is good oh yeah if they want to come back in you know 20 years and do a Cobra Kai reboot with Sam and the son sure yeah but uh, so my one recommendation, besides the Flash movie, which I'm very excited for, also I've already seen. Um, I saw it on Thursday. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I was f- sitting there walking around, and I'm like, and maybe that. So I, yesterday I had like the most massive headache, and it could have been three, four things actually. First off, the guilt of seeing the Flash movie before I saw it with my brother, and my dad, could have you know been what did it oh you already saw it oh yeah i saw it i saw it on thursday so (laughs) that's funny so i either had massive headache and sleepless nights because of the guilt or i was mildly sick or i just caffeine withdrawals and so now i'm back on the sauce again or you know i think maybe i was out in the sun for quite a long time so it could have been like heat related or something like that or maybe it was a combination of all four of them regardless um, besides that, and I do have thoughts and opinions and I will not spoil because I, I, I didn't get spoiled on some of the certain things. And it, to me, it is beautiful. I do have certain things I would love to bring up next week r- with you guys. But, uh, my other recommendation is the Apple plus show silo i've heard about it just recently oh is it worth it i am so loving it i I don't know if either one of you have seen the the movie i think it came out like in like 2011s or something like that the city of ember oh yeah i like city of ember so basically it's kind of like a city of ember except city of ember takes like you know a childlike look at a post-apocalyptic like you know silo underneath the ground Mm -hmm. um this is more of an adult look where there's politics, where there's backstabbing, betrayal, and lies also. So it's kind of a more adult City of Ember type of a situation. Okay. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. I am on Apple TV Plus right now, so I'll have to check it out. Okay. So I'll retract what I said about Stranger Things. Stranger Things is probably not going to happen this year. It'll be next year, um, is what people are speculating. I did figure out the show that I'm looking forward to that also comes out around, around July 22nd. It is a show called Twisted Metal. Oh, I oh, heard the about PlayStation that. game. Yeah. yeah. What was it? I, 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 what's his face from Arrested Development? Will Arnett. Yeah, is the clown. Yeah. I think there's two versions of the clown. Mm. I think there might be a before Twist, twisty, and yeah. a post. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't wait. So Futurama, Twisted Metal, can't wait for in July. But I think that's all we have for y'all today. All right. Get out of here.